What's going on guys, Oma here and in this video we'll take a look at these two guys. Godox AD100 Pro versus Godox AD200 Pro. As you know, portability is the main purpose of pocket flashlight. I do a lot of food photography and usually the setup is at the client place. And in portraiture, carrying large strobes is not always enjoyable. Here where I believe these two guys can fit pretty well. So what are the differences between AD100 Pro and AD200 Pro? Which one should you get? And are you buying your off-camera flash for the first time or willing to go with a smaller portable setup? Here I will compare and test both systems in several situations so you get an idea which one suits you the best. Now let's get started. Disclaimer, this unit was provided to me by Advanced Media in Dubai. Thank you Advanced Media for supporting the channel, however, this is not a sponsored video and as usual, my content is fully independent. Personally, I've been using the AD200 and AD200 Pro for a couple of years and I know what this guy can offer. There is no doubt, a powerful pocket flash this size is incredibly useful. So, what about this size? It's much smaller and lighter. So with the release of AD100 Pro, and because I don't usually use the AD200 Pro at full power, I started thinking why I don't check this smaller unit. And just to make it clear from the beginning, the AD100 Pro does not replace the AD200 Pro. They are two different units with different specs. And since I care about portability, there is no softbox used in this video. Instead, I got this beautiful 85mm umbrella reflector with a wide diffuser. It's super lightweight and creates a beautiful fill light. I like it very much and we'll keep the links down below if you want to check it out. Now we'll discuss the specs and differences, which are important in my opinion. But if you'd like to jump to the real world test, check the timeline below. So Godox AD100 Pro is 100W and technically it's half as powerful as the 200 Pro. Let's say it's one stop less. And when testing them side by side, I can tell that the AD200 Pro is more like 1.3 stops brighter. And speaking of portability, the AD200 Pro, including the battery, weighs 900 grams, two pounds, whereas the AD100 Pro is only 530 grams, 1.16 pounds, as you see, there is a remarkable size difference between the batteries and the chargers as well. However, the AD100 Pro can give up to 360 strikes at full power and thousands of low power strikes. So with the AD100 Pro, I did about 10 hours of food photography project with more than 500 images at one fourth and half of power. And I still had 25% remaining battery. Anyway, the AD200 Pro offers 500 shots at full power. Interesting. Both units have LED screen that shows the settings, but the AD100 Pro screen is way brighter. Also, both units feature a USB-C port, a 100 meter transmission range, and 1800 maximum high-speed sync. The AD100 Pro modeling lamp is warm while the 200 Pro modeling lamp is white and brighter. Now at full power, the 100 Pro maximum recycle time is 1.5 seconds, and I would say sometimes I notice that I get a faster recycle rate. Anyway, the 200 Pro maximum recycle time is 2.1, 2.1, 1.5. Moreover, the white balance is also important. So we get 5800 Kelvin from the 100 Pro and 5600 Kelvin from the larger guy. Both units feature two one fourth thread mounts. The 200 Pro has one on the side and another one at the bottom. So you can mount it in two directions. So the 100 Pro has one Fresnel light, while the 200 Pro comes with two lamps, a speed light flash head and a bare bulb flash head. Also, a Fresnel head can be bought separately. And generally speaking, the bare bulb lamp spread more light in the softbox. But when I tested that in the past, I found there is no significant difference between the flash head and the bare bulb when using a softbox. Therefore, I ended up using the speed light head only. 
And if you decided to buy any of these lights, you need to get a transmitter or a trigger. Here I have the Godox X Pro. Each camera system has a specific model, so make sure to get the one that can fit on your camera. And now when I use both lights separately in a real food photography project, I would say both lights are really great. But you may consider buying the 100 Pro model instead of the 200 because in my experience, I did not even use the 100 Pro at full power. And that would be amazing. This image, for example, shot at f8 and one half flash power. And now side by side, the 100 Pro image is on the left and the 200 Pro is on the right. The 200 Pro has more like a cold color tone, whereas the 100 Pro is warm. Indeed, same white balance and camera settings were used in both images. And here is another example at f4. And when looking at my setup, I usually prefer using one source of light with a softbox in addition to a white card reflector on the opposite side. You know, it depends on your style of shooting, and you probably prefer having two lights, each one on a side. But personally, I love making one side darker than the other. And before discussing the performance of both units in portraiture photography, I would like to show you first what an image looks like without any light setup. And now with the 100 Pro at half power. And again with the 200 Pro at one fourth power. Although I don't usually prefer this style of shooting, here I wanted to darken the background a little bit in order to show you that any of these lights is capable to create a kind of background separation. And as I mentioned earlier, I owned the AD200 Pro for years and I know that it can do this kind of work. Definitely, I'm also happy to see the 100 Pro model eligible to such an outdoor setup. Indeed, none of these lights can work well when the sun is acting as a key light. And they work the best, in my opinion, if there is no sun at all or when the sun is a backlight. And what modifier I'm using in this setup? It's a Godox Parabolic Umbrella Reflector UB85. And as you see, it's foldable and lightweight, which make it more than perfect for such portable setups. And if you're thinking to get one, the white diffuser is sold separately. And this umbrella is also available in larger sizes as well. And if you are interested in controlling the flash color and other modifiers, both models have such an accessory kit. Made of grid, snoot, color filters, honeycombs, and such more. I will keep the links down below, check them if you are interested. Finally, I hope this video helped in making your decision and giving you a closer idea what are the differences between both systems. Thumbs up if you find this video helpful and bump the subscribe button for more camera gear reviews. This was Oma and see you guys in another one.